Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about programming languages and many of them. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of making a, pro a website using multiple programming languages? Well, um, so the benefits are usually that you can pick a certain problem and you can pick the optimal well that's the idea you, it's really good for you to get some context this used to be the idea around microservices actually or rather it was a strong argument that people made for microservices that you could pick the right language for the problem that you are solving. Now, that is in theory possible. So an example would be where um, my fa I think my favorite example of this problem is uh, Uber. They wrote an article a while back where they, because they are one of the companies who moved from Node.js um, and that stack over to uh, to Golang and a lot of Golang people really liked this this article but the thing is that a lot of people associated the article with the idea that oh Uber is actually moving over to to Golang well yes and no what's actually said in the article is that they had a service and if I remember correctly it was their geographical service which basically just maps out like in a section on a map it just shapes like a circle or like a, a square like uh, or something like that uh, in, in a certain area on a map and doing that is a pure computation and they found if I remember correctly now uh, that the service was hit all the time, like it was one of their biggest dependencies in, the, in their microservices network. And the reason why they did that was because Node simply could not keep up with all of that data crunching and Go was had an easier time doing so. So they did that. Now another company that did exactly the same thing was Discord. So Discord, and they actually did it from Go to Rust because they were using Go and then they found that they had a service that also had enormous performance uh, requirements and not just on like the actual data crunching itself and, par and, and parallelism and so forth but on memory consumption and garbage collection and things like that so they wrote it in rust and for the same reason so that is the one of the like logical strong uh, arguments for having multiple languages if you have a specific problem that is more sustainable to solve through another language say that the, most of your website is made in I don't know Ruby or PHP or JavaScript or something like that and then you have high performance requirements then you might want to write it in a language that is highly performant as opposed to these traditional web languages right and then the other advantages is of course that you allow your if you have a large system it's the case that it's easier to find people for your company if you allow yourself to just say hey we don't care what type of developer we have it doesn't matter if it's a PHP developer or a Python developer or something like that it can be anybody right uh, rather than saying that yeah we're only hiring people who know a specific language so that's also a benefit to having multiple mm, uh, programming languages so these are the main ones. There are probably more that I'm not thinking about. But uh, the the downside with this is that, well, one part is that you now have a larger amount of diversity in your code base. And so as you can imagine, a lot of people realize very quickly, because I, if you were paying attention, I said that the people who were pro this approach in the microservices uh, bubble I don't know it's still going on but you know when the hype was as, as it's as strong as it could get people stopped saying that because people very quickly started realizing that if you have a microservices architecture with you know I don't know how many services in especially in the larger companies and you have all these different programming languages it's actually really hard to standardize anything it's really hard 
to hire people because you might have some services who are written in some like super obscure language that almost nobody knows and nobody really wants to touch but in your region the easiest developer to find is like a Java developer and they don't want to do that so or rather they don't might not even know how to do it uh, and then the, they kind of realize very quickly that it's actually a better approach to have well, if we're talking just from the perspective of I want to be assured that there's a consistency through my application and I want to trust that I can find the right people and people can be productive. It's actually much better to have a smaller range of languages, ideally even uh, up, uh, one language because there's a lot of power to using the same language across the stack or like across the, um, the system, right? And so that's when people started realizing that there is actually uh, I think even some people go as far as to say that having more than one programming language for an application especially if it's a monolith is actually an anti-pattern and the main reason for that is the model problem and the code sharing problem where there is a lot of logic that can't really be shared because you're in two different programming languages now there are absolutely workarounds for that you can use what is it is it Thrift or I can't remember, but it's basically the equivalent of gRPC and Google's uh, attempt to like generate models for different languages. Uh, and the uh, well, there are ways, guys, for you to do code generation and so forth. Because as soon as I say that this is a problem, all the people who are very into that space are going to tell me, Frederick, that's not a problem. You can generate all the clients between you know a python server and all like a javascript uh, client or something like that and i go yes you can do that but i hope that we can all agree that it's a lot worse usually to have to maintain all of that complexity to generate different models and different clients or different programming languages and then also be limited in the fact that you might have to have entire libraries that would have to be converted from one programming language to another when you could have just had it across the stack so th that's sort of where the pain starts and that's not honestly guys that's not just because you have different programming languages it's the same problem that you have with uh, microservices uh, because as soon as you start segmenting out code and this is the big the big fat lie that people tell you about monoliths the monolith is the only structure that does not have this problem well oh, there's one more that is the monorepo which is i argue the as today it is the best um, architecture there is uh, for large-scale development but that's a different story but the monolith at the very least as a default does not have this problem because if you have a monolith and you don't you're using the same language you're always able to access all the code that you are writing readily and there are no really you know if you change a model that cascades through the entire system so you don't have to worry that you're making breaking changes because you're gonna have to address them before you can merge your stuff right so what I want you to take away from this is that there are advantages and of course there are disadvantages with having more than one programming language for a system usually the advantages are that you can pick your language and you can usually pick the language you either prefer or ideally the one that is correct for the problem that you are solving uh, then I would say that the disadvantage is that well if you have a lot of languages it might be hard for you to hire people and it might be hard for you to find enough people for certain parts of the system because you don't really always know how a system is going to turn out over time then model sharing and logic sharing code sharing all that stuff becomes a lot harder when you have multiple languages uh, these are the big downsides as a rule most people would say that it is a code smell or like it's an anti-pattern to use multiple programming languages because usually you don't need to I will raise my finger and I say this is true for almost 80% of the time but for the situations that I was talking about with uh, Google or sorry with Uber uh, and Discord it makes a lot of sense and I think that that should be the general like the standard way of dealing with this guys pick one language 
keep it across the stack and when you find that there is like an actual issue that cannot be solved because you've uh, trust me guys there are so many people who tell you that say Java is an unperformant language but the fact of the matter is that that's only true from like the like philosophic pers philosophical perspective very uh, there's a lot of companies who have hit the performance problem with Java and solved it through tweaking their actual system right and that is exactly what discord and uber were, were doing they didn't rewrite the whole system just because they had one tiny problem with one part of the system they rewrote that part so now they have an ecosystem of quote unquote simple languages or languages that are doing this stuff that doesn't require enormous performance and one tiny little service to start off with that solves that exact problem. That is the pragmatist's way of solving it and it is the way that I suggest to you that you think about this problem. Go over to another programming language only if it makes a lot of sense and if you have a specific problem that can really only be solved by doing so. Have a great day.